ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم اما بعد قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الا من تاب وامن وعمل عملا صالحا فاولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فانه يتوب الى الله متابا صدق الله العظيم respected elders brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh tonight the 15th of shaban is regarded by many muslims as a very important night in the islamic calendar and is known as laylatul barat or shabi barat many different beliefs as to the events that occur on this night exists it is believed that our book of deeds are closed and new ones opened births deaths sustenance etc for the next year are decreed on this night are some of the most common beliefs to support the beliefs and narrations about this night some people quote verses 1 to 6 of surah dukhan surah 44 it reads as follows ha mim by the book that makes things clear we sent it down during a blessed night for we ever wish to warn against evil in the night is made distinct every affair of wisdom by command from our presence for we ever send revelations as mercy from your lord for he hears and knows all things however these verses clearly refer to the revelation of the quran which you know was revealed in the month of ramadan on the night of qadr further proof of the blessed night and the night of power being in ramadan is found in surah baqara surah 2 verse 185 which reads ramadan is the month in which was sent down the quran as a guide to mankind also clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong so this clarifies that laylatul mubaraka is not laylatul barat and they and that there is no other proof regarding the events of this night in the quran we are told in the quran to verify information before acting upon it in surah bani israel surah 17 verse 36 we read and pursue not that of which you have no knowledge for every act of hearing or of seeing or feeling in the heart will be inquired into on the day of reckoning one of the most common things that is associated with this night is a concern with our book of deeds Allah tells us in surah yunus surah 10 verse 61 in whatever business you may be and whatever portion you may be reciting from the quran and whatever deed you mankind may be doing we are witness thereof when you are deeply engrossed therein nor is hidden from your lord so much as the weight of an atom on the earth or in heaven and not the least and not the greatest of these things but are recorded in a clear record Allah describes to us very beautifully things that we may not be aware of anything good or bad that we may be doing is being witnessed even when we are closely engrossed in the deed as many would be with the soccer world cup currently and not aware of what is happening around us at every moment we are being watched nothing is left out or forgotten We should always remember that every atom's weight of good or bad that we do is recorded as you are told in surah zilzal all this is kept for our judgment after our death so that there may be no contesting of the decision we read in surah anbiya surah 21 verse 47 we shall set up scales of justice for the day of judgment so that no soul will be dealt with unjustly in the least and there be no more than the weight of a mustard seed we will bring it to account and enough are we to take to account everything will be brought forth in our deeds weighed when we receive our record the manner in which we receive it will tell us in which way we will proceed we read in surah inshikaq surah 84 verse 7 to 12 
then he who is given his record in his right hand, soon will his account be taken by an easy reckoning, and he will turn to his people rejoicing. But he who is given his record behind his back, soon will he cry for perdition, and he will enter a blazing fire. When we think of all the bad deeds that we have done, we feel a sense of guilt and want to atone for them, and perhaps also wish for a fresh start. And this is possible. Unlike the Christian belief that man is born in sin and can never be in the presence of Allah without accepting that Isa al-Islam died for their sins, the Quran is full of verses which tell us about the mercy of Allah and his forgiveness. The verses that I quoted at the beginning are an example of this. They are from Surah Furqan, Surah 25, verses 70 to 71, and translates as follows. Unless he repents, believes, and works righteous deeds, for Allah will change the evil of such persons into good, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And whoever repents and does good has truly turned to Allah with an acceptable conversion. These verses tell us something about Tawbah, or repentance, as it is commonly translated. Verse 71 tells us that it is an acceptable conversion or as another translation states, a complete redemption. In other words, it is a turning over a new leaf or having a fresh start. Now let us take a closer look at repentance, forgiveness, and the mercy of Allah. As soon as we open the Quran, we are told that Allah is the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. We are told to never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, even we have, when we have done wrong. In Surah Zumar, Surah 39, verse 53, we read, Say, O my servants who have transgressed, transgressed against their souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah. For Allah forgives all sins, for he is of forgiving most merciful. And you are told that Allah accepts our repentance. In Surah Shura, Surah 42, verse 25, he is the one that accepts repentance from his servants and forgives sins. And he knows all that you do. So we see very clearly from these verses that we should never feel that we have gone too far down the path of wrong. There is always hope if we turn to Allah. Allah tells us that he accepts our repentance. He tells us that he forgives all sins. However, there are some exceptions. The first is associating others with Allah and dying in the state. We read in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, verse 48. Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him, but he forgives anything else to whom he pleases. To set up partners with Allah is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. From here we learn that every sin besides shirk can be forgiven by Allah. The second exception is those that continually do wrong and only on the deathbed decide to repent. We are told in Surah Nisa, verse 18, of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil until death faces one of them. And he says, now have I repented indeed. Now of those who die rejecting faith, for them we have prepared a punishment most grievous. A good example of deathbed repentance I accept in Islam at the time of death is that of Pharaoh when he was drowning. And we all know that it was not accepted from him. So what does repentance and turning to Allah consist of? Let us take a look at a couple of verses in Surah An-Am, Surah number 6, verse 54, we read, when, tho when those come to you who believe in our signs, say, peace be on you. Your Lord has inscribed for himself the rule of mercy. Verily, if any of you did evil in ignorance, and thereafter repented and amended his conduct, lo, he is of forgiving most merciful. And in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, verse 39, we read, But as for him who repents after having thus done wrong and makes amends, behold, Allah will accept his repentance. Verily, Allah is much forgiving a dispenser of grace. From these verses, as well as from the verses recited at the opening, 
a very important aspect about repentance is told to us, and that is making amends. So, does just asking Allah for forgiveness or reciting a certain verse or phrase a certain number of times suffice as repentance? The answer is no, because we haven't made a change to ourselves and would easily fall back into committing the wrong actions that we have done. We are told in Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, verse 135, And those who have done something to be ashamed of or wrong their own souls, earnestly bring Allah to mind and ask for forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except Allah? And are never obstinate in persisting knowingly in the wrong that they have done. To repent means to be converted, that is, to be mentally reorientated from the worldly to Allah. It does not mean merely admitting or confessing guilt, but actually doing something to make amends. It also consists of bringing about a complete change in one's life, turning one's back completely to the past wrongs done. We read in Surah Toha, Surah number 20, verse 82, but without doubt, behold, I forgive all sins unto any who repents and attains to faith and does righteous deeds and thereafter keeps to the right path. Let us now look at an example that we find in the Quran. In Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, verses 102 to 105, we read, Others there are who have acknowledged their wrongdoings. They have mixed an act of what was good with another that was evil. Perhaps Allah will turn unto them in mercy, for Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Of the deeds, take arms, that so you may purify and sanctify them, and pray on their behalf. Verily, your prayers are a source of security for them, and Allah is one who receives the gifts of charity, and that Allah is verily he, the off-returning, most merciful. And say, work righteousness. Soon will Allah observe your work and his messenger and the believers. Soon will you be brought back to the knower of what is hidden and what is open. Then will he show you the truth of all that you did. This passage is in reference to the Tabuk expedition. There were some of the believers who stayed behind without a valid excuse and were filled with shame and regret thereafter. As the verse tells us, they were not hypocrites, but had weaknesses which they acknowledged. The prophet was told to take sadaqah from them, to purify them. Regarding those verses, I came across a beautiful analogy. It reads as follows. The confession of one's son is like the feeling of one who has fallen into a pit. He at once realizes that he is in a critical situation in a pit where he does not like to abide and is troubled over it. Therefore, he thinks out plans for getting out of it and makes practical efforts for this. Likewise, one who confesses his sins and feels ashamed of it and takes practical steps to atone for it by making offerings and doing other good works intends to come out of the pit of sin. So we see when we repent and keep to our faith, we do righteous deeds, do not repeat the wrong we have done, and keep to the guidance of Allah. Then we know that we are fulfilling what Allah expects from us in order for our repentance to be accepted. Another point to keep in mind is that we should not take Allah's forgiveness for granted. Even though He is of forgiving and most merciful, His punishment is also strict. Allah tells us in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, verse 98, Know you that Allah is strict in punishment and that Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Now going back to those that will receive the record in the right hand, let us take a closer look at what Allah tells us about them. In Surah Haqqa, verse six, uh, Surah 69, verses 18 to 20, we read, That day shall you be brought to judgment. Not an act of yours that you hide will be hidden. Then he that will be given his record in his right hand will say, Ah, here, yeah, read my record. I did really understand that my account would one day reach me. 
these verses show us the mindset that we need to have in order to receive our record in our right hands. We need to understand that we will be brought before Allah with our book of deeds. And this understanding should be in our minds every day and not merely on specific days. We need to be conscious of Allah. We need to have taqwa. Keeping on the topic of taqwa and doing good works and keeping on the path of Allah's guidance, we can move to something that is, all, is on all of our minds at the moment, and that is about fasting. The month of Ramadan will begin in about two weeks, and right now is a good time to start preparing for it. The purpose of our fast is given in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse 183. O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that you may learn self-restraint, taqwa. We learn from here that the primary purpose of fasting is for us to learn taqwa, to become conscious of Allah. It is a period of training ourselves to do what Allah expects from us and keep away from that which He dislikes. We fast so that we become aware of Allah. I'm sure that most of us have an awareness that we shouldn't eat or drink and think twice before we do so, even when we are not fasting. If we can take this awareness further than just food and drink, then we are making progress. When we are aware of Allah, we will be aware of all that we do, all that we say, and all that we think. We will be concerned about our book of deeds. We will be aware we will be aware of our book of deeds. We wouldn't leave our repentance for certain times only. But as soon as we have done something wrong, or even thought about something wrong, then we will bring Allah to mind. Fasting is thus a very important aspect of a Muslim service and duty to Allah. If you want tonight to be a time when we make a fresh start, then asking for forgiveness amending our conduct, and increasing in actions that please Allah are important things that we need to do and keep up doing throughout our lives. With Ramadan coming soon, it is a good time to start. We will have roughly six weeks in which we can condition ourselves to doing what is right and refraining from what is wrong. To conclude, we need to keep in mind that if we want to receive our record in our right hand, then we need to be constant in doing good actions and repent often. Allah tells us that doing good can atone for the evil that we have done. We read in Surah Hud, Surah 11, verse 114, those things that are good remove those that are evil. Be that the word of remembrance to those who remember their Lord. Shukran, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.